before we get into some practicals, I want to I wanna kind of explain a few things. And maybe sometimes you're supposed to give the objectives at the beginning of a talk. I'm going to give my objectives or some things that we have to compare at the end because content, contemplation has a negative connotation to it in some regards. You know, and so the first one is uh, the Eastern perspective of contemplation. And that's emptying oneself. To contemplate is to empty the mind, which achieves peace and a tranquil state of being. You know, that's not what we're talking about here. Then I'm not talking about Eastern Orthodox. I'm talking about Eastern religion. There's a difference between Eastern Orthodox Christianity and Eastern Orthodox religion. Big difference. Secondly, the, we the Western, or I'm going to call modern, which is mindfulness. This is similar to um, the Eastern way of doing things, but really it's in a corporate America setting to where companies like Google or Microsoft or these others, they set up these spaces for people to like unwind during their work day and they can go empty their minds. They can go sit over there and play a video game or do something else. But the goal in mind is for you to be more productive at work. It's not for you to be a better person. It's for you to be more productive because you're on their clock. So they can get more work out of you or uh, uh, more intentional work out of you if you're able to have these moments of like freeing your mind from things. Mindfulness. We're not talking about that. What we're talking about is Christ-centered contemplation, which is gentle, still, and peaceful knowing of Christ's presence in and around us. We do not empty ourselves, but we fill ourselves with Christ. Our mind, our soul, and our body, we become one with the creator of the world. And over time, we become more and more aware, which reveals the peace of God flowing through us as, of, as vessels of divine love. It's not about emptying ourselves of one thing. It's about filling ourselves with Christ. So we're going to put up a quick side-by-side -side of an Eastern modern versus Christ-centered. And the first one is emptying one's mind. The Christ-centered aims to fill one's mind. The Eastern one would be self-focused. Christ-centered is spirit-focused. Eastern or modern says detachment of ego is really important. But the Christ-centered one was attachment to Christ. The last one says to seek to release. But the Christ-centered one seeks to abide. It's really important that we understand what we're talking about. Because the world will tell you that contemplation really is empty yourself and just sit there and be. What's going to come of you if you sit there and empty yourself? You're opening yourself up to a lot of things that might come against you. And if you're not filling your vessel, we've learned that in Scripture. Jesus says that when uh, the demons leave, and I'm terrible at quoting Scripture in verse, but I know the stories. <laughs> Jesus said that the demons will come back and see it cleaned up and bring it seven times worse. Don't empty yourself. Need to be filled with Christ. Think of this like, it was cool what Keith shared about, you know, timing. Because I think of things like a car. I, I kind of see it like a tuning fork to get what the note is. Or like a harmonic balancer that helps keep the, you know, the engine right. Or a valve adjustment if you have an old vehicle or a timing. I don't know if anybody's ever used a timing gun to see how off the car is on timing. But I see contemplation as like a piece of that. Are we tuned into the Spirit of God? Are we listening for him? Are we being patient with him? Are we walking out this peace that is within him, that, that is within us? So in practice, I want us to look at it like this. And this is not in your notes. You're just going to have to roll with it. So like we discussed with the four ways of praying earlier, first we talked with talking to or at God. So that's kind of the way you might begin to practice contemplative prayer. So when you go to pray in the morning time or tonight, whenever you go, begin by talking to God. This is going to seem very elementary, but that's where I'm going to just begin, okay? We did a 12-week, myself and somebody else, did a 12-week in, uh, intensive discipleship group with some teenagers, and this was the method that we'd used to, to, to kind of coach them or you know, teach them through this. And so we begin with talking to God. Thank you, Lord for being my God. Thank you for giving me this day, 
Thank you for letting me wake up this morning. Whatever you want to begin to talk at him or to him. Secondly, we begin to speak with God. Lord, I need your help with this situation. You know, Billy Vanskoy is, you know, acting like this towards me. Or, you know, these other things are happening. And then we, then you want to move into a time of listening for God. So we begin with talking. We went into speaking. Then we're going to try to slow ourselves down a little bit. And we're going to go into a time of listening for God. And that could be at my house. I like to listen for birds. I like to listen to the sounds of the city because I still live in town. And so it could be the uh, neighbor using a chainsaw at 7 in the morning. God can speak through that. You know, the birds have returned because our outdoor cat did not. So the birds came back, you know. And so, or it could be squirrels gathering things. It's just the noise of the environment around us. God's speaking through all that. So I'm just calming myself down, you know, and I'm listening for God. And then we, and then you move into being with God. And what does that mean? That means that I'm not going to put myself in a place where I have to pray something. I'm going to just rest and be quiet. I'm not going to try to organize my day. I'm not going to, you know, thoughts are going to come about your day. You have to get up and go to work. You have to, you know, do this. You have this on the schedule. You have to go here. You're going to let those thoughts kind of just like roll through because they're going to come. And that's okay. It's part of our life. But in our time here, you want to, uh, I want you to be patient. I want you to be slow. I want you to be quiet. Just take your time. Allow yourself to just sit and feel the presence of God with you because he's there. He's always there. And I don't want to, you know, dig into the theology of God being there in some really messed up moments throughout life. But in the moment, he's always there. So let's focus on the presence of God like Brother Lawrence so eloquently titles practicing the presence of God. That's exactly what this really is. Because from this is where we live. From this, like Paul says in Galatians 5, with the fruits of the Spirit, that's where this stuff comes from. That's where the fruits of the Spirit comes from, us focusing on the Spirit of God, not on our own ability to do it, but on God through us doing these things. I'm not going to read all of it because it's a lot of Scripture, but Paul says in Galatians that the fruit of the Spirit is is joy, love, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Leisha taught the kids at VBS all of this. It was rather timely that she used that, that this was part of the curriculum that she created for VBS. That that is the fruit of our contemplation. That is the fruit of our time of being with God. And it's important that we see the fruit from something, right? Amen? Is this tracking? All right, I'm going to invite everybody.